Hi everyone and welcome back! My name is Natalia Akashia, if you don't know how to pronounce my name. And this is the game called Mother's Favorite. The Ray Rapid Studios actually did reach out to me and ask if I would play their game, and I was like, sure, why not? I'm adventurous. We are playing what looks like it's sort of sci-fi-ish horror game. So this story I won't get a little we won't get too much into. Uh, it's supposed to be about a... So our protagonist's name is Forth, who has lived in this decrepit-looking quarantine space station with a family of robots uh, that apparently kind of just degrade mentally, quote-unquote, uh, in a way that makes them dangerous to even her. And she also ends up picking up this, uh, this illness that we need to find a cure for and help her escape the space station. So apparently we are on a timer. But this game is supposed to be a visual novel, which is based off horror. So keep in mind that any horror games that I play probably have very, very dark uh very dark themes involved i will list them off right now so if you have any issues with any of these please do not watch starts with blood and gore injuries to harm to arm fingers legs and face physical violence body horror which is like mutil mutilations loss of mental control self-harm Thoughts of self-harm, mental and physical abuse, medical in imagery, which is like needles, surgery, torture, which some of that might be not so good for me, but I should be okay considering I think my brain can tell whether or not it's fake. Uh, so we should be okay. If not, then this video is probably not going to go up. But there's also drowning, suffocation, and starvation. So if you have any issues with any of these listed themes then you probably won't want to watch any of this video but if you do watch this video i would love to hear your opinions in the comments below or you can leave them on the itch.io page for the developers so that way they can you know they can hear your critiques just remember to please be nice constructive criticism goes a long way and calling people names is not a good thing so please be nice and let's get on with the show. Considering I've been sitting here for God knows how, how ever the F long. <laughs> Sorry. Talking too much. I've started dreaming again. In my dreams, I feel safe. Safe from everything waiting for me when I wake up. I can't remember the last time I had a dream like this. My memory has gotten so bad, it could have been weeks, months, or maybe even years since the last one. Although they bring me comfort, I know that I shouldn't be having these dreams. The medical reports say that most patients started having vivid dreams and hallucinations right before the virus entered its fi final stage. Less than a month later, every single case resulted in death. Yikes. I think tomorrow is going to be my last birthday. What? Mother says I should be grateful since most infected individuals would have given anything to live half as long as I have. 18 years doesn't exactly feel like much of an accomplishment. Oh, hey, when you're sick, anything is an accomplishment, man. I was born here. Aboard the quarantine station, 388SR. This place is devoid of other patients and the staff is fully automated. I have lived my whole life without seeing another person like me. That sounds lonely. Mother says that this station was built to house over 3,000 people, offering round the clock hospice care until a cure could be found. This place was supposed to be the sanctuary for those awaiting a brighter future. Well, that's not going to be a bright future if those doctors get sick, though. But everyone else is dead now. I'm all that's left. Gosh dang. That's heavy. 
But we keep on trucking, right? We keep on going. That's how it works. You get up and you try again. It'll be okie dokie. While I still have time, I keep dreaming about my lake. I don't know how many times I've had this exact dream, but I never get tired of it. Everything about it feels so real, from the warm sun on my skin to the soft sand in between my toes. I can feel a gentle breeze caressing my face and I can hear the rustling of leaves all around me. I open my eyes and I can see it. The only thing in the whole universe I deem worthy of the world, of the word perfect. In my dreams, I am standing on the shore of a vast lake. The water is dark and deep, reflecting the golden rays coming from the setting sun peeking just over the distant tree line. I'm hip... <clears throat> I am hypnotized by the noise each crashing wave creates, lost in the chaotic wall of white noise. It drowns out all of the awful thoughts that normally buzz around in my brain. There are no catastrophic rooms. There are no claustrophobic rooms. No blinking lights and no rattling old air filters. In every direction, the world sprawls infinitely. A canvas of hazy colors ablaze in the sun. In my dreams, I am free. Eventually, I'm going to have to wake up. I'll go back to the biting, metallic cold that permeates deep into my bones where it settles into my blood like a poison. Sometimes when I am feeling brave, I pretend that this isn't just a dream. I entertain the idea that this might actually be a memory. It's dangerous to pretend like that, not when it comes to my own memories. My sickness comes along with a long list of horrible symptoms. Fatigue, nausea, migraines, anemia, seizures, frequent bruising, and bleeding. Dang. But worst of all is the memory loss. Each day I can feel it getting worse. Memory loss is the worst, man. Even just being like somebody without horrible memory loss like not remembering something like especially when you put down your keys and you you can't find them <laughs> that's horrible i can still remember the big things important stuff like my name my birthday my favorite color my name is fourth my birthday is tomorrow and my favorite color is orange that stuff is easy what hurts the most is all the little things i don't even realize i am forgetting I lay on my bed and struggle to remember what happened a year ago, a month ago, sometimes even what happened just the day before. Every night, it feels like there is a tiny hole in the back of my head and everything that makes me human is dripping out onto the floor. One drop might not seem like the end of the universe, but some nights I swear I can feel the empty, echoing space inside my skull where a person used to be. I don't want the dream to end. I don't want to wake up for another day on this stupid station. I don't want to smile like a good little girl and act like nothing has gone horribly wrong with my family. What? What do I want? I could always say that I don't want to die, but I know that isn't an option anymore. The sickness is getting worse. My dreams are proof of that. The one thing I want more than anything else in the universe is to seek my lake once see my lake once before I lose myself entirely. It doesn't have to be the exact same lake in my dream. I don't even think that lake truly exists. It's just a collection of images I've seen in drawings and photos. But somewhere out there in the vastness of space is a lake. A place where I can let myself fade away and die happy. I'm going to find my lake, and I'm going to get off this station. Well, you are not going to die. I have no plans on letting you die, even if I fuck up a million times. Not gonna do it. Nope. My dream starts to fade, and I brace myself for what comes next. We are going to get up, and we are going to march forward. The first of three morning alarms goes off, so I rub the sleep from my eyes and get out of bed. Ooh. I like this color. 
Actually, these images are kind of nice. They're not like... I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to sound mean. They're not like insanely detailed. But I do like the little bits of detail that I can see. Like the button, the light up stuff here. And then just little things around the screen. Ooh, I'm not even showing my cursor. Well, the lights around the bed are really nice. Whoops. Uh, in the dark, I change out of my pajamas and put them down the dirty clothes chute. By the time I come back to my room, my pajamas will be waiting for me. Clean and ready to wear again. I like that back button. Okay. I appreciate stuff like that. That's that's a little detail I think that can go very much missed, I feel like. But you have quite a few options down here too. Skip, auto, save, quick save, quick load. You've also got the history. That's really nice. Like if you want to see more. That's cool. Very nice. I open my closet and pull out the only outfit I am permitted to wear. A large fluffy dress with a button-up blouse and a long flowing shawl to wrap around my arms. No matter how dirty or damaged my outfit gets during the day, it reappears in my closet each morning, cleaned and fully repaired. I actually started ripping up my dress on purpose to get my hands on any fabric or thread I might need later. It proved very useful for making my own bandages, especially whenever mother refuses to treat my wounds. Oh, why would she do that? Like, what the hell? My hand instinctively goes to my right shoulder. The muscles still sore from what happened last time. The injury happened over a week ago, but the pain is still fresh in my mind. I've read the manuals for each of the other caretakers. Directly harming a patient is supposed to be forbidden. But I guess mother doesn't have to listen to those rules anymore. Well, unfortunately, if your mother is a robot, she's not going to give a crap. Unfortunately. I give a crap, though. I want you to live. The next step in my morning routine is to take my weight and vitals. I step up onto a small metal dias and place my hands on the round metal device. A small beep lets me know the scan is complete. After that, I head to the bathroom. The second alarm goes off, warning me that I only have a few minutes until little brother comes to collect me. The light switch, the lights switch on and I'm able to see my own face in the bathroom mirror. Let's see your beautiful face. Oh, yes. She's very pretty. I like her. I like the hair color. So I'm usually not a pink fan. But she actually looks very pretty. I do like the color of the eyes. It's not like they're not trying to overly stand out with these colors here. Because I feel like that's a lot of people's problems is they'll go straight for one color. And they won't really think about a color palette and how certain colors will stand out better with other colors. So like how I'm using black and white for my outfits to make my eyes and my hair stand out a little bit more than the rest of my body. So if you wanted other places on your body to stand out more, you would use a different color. Like I could easily change maybe my shirt to a different color to match my eyes, which is cool. But sometimes it oversaturates in one color. So you don't want to like oversaturate in a color because then it just looks, it looks a little bit weird. If you've ever seen somebody out in public that's wearing just one color, uh, it doesn't look half as good as if you were to use either black or white as another tone to help keep the color kind of like I want to say keep the color kind of in its own control or in its own lane so that way you don't go looking about really weird and just like a blotch color there's nothing wrong with wearing one color but like if you're really interested in like standing out in terms of like your outfits it's way better to use black and white to try and push either the color outwards or to try and keep it like from going kind of all over the place 
Hence why you have your color palette and in home ec, they would always teach you to know your color tones. And I'm very certain that I butchered that because I was looking for a word. But of course that word is is not it's not coming out of my brain right now. It is definitely not coming out like I want it to. But moving on. I quickly brush my teeth and wash my face in the sink. I take some time to look into the mirror at the sad, tired stranger who looks back at me. I take a deep breath and practice one of my many fake smiles that I will have to wear today. Good morning, little brother. How are you this morning? I clear my throat and try again, more sin sincerely this time. Good morning, little brother. How are you this morning? That should be good enough. No matter how I am feeling inside, my behavior has to remain as polite as possible. This is exhausting. Yeah, I feel that. When you have to put on a certain face for people, it gets very exhausting. I risk pulling up my sleeve to look at the ugly bruise on my shoulder. A grim reminder of why I can't let my emotions show again. Mother doesn't like it when I... The third, uh, the third alarm goes off, startling me out of my thought. I can already hear little brother calling to me from outside my bedroom door. Oh, fourth, my darling sister, guess what time it is? I'll be right there, little brother. Hmm. My voice is already shaky. I know little brother won't hurt me, but that doesn't mean I can let my guard down around him. I wonder what happened. Curious. I walk to the front door and straighten out my dress. I take in one last deep breath right as the door hisses open. A large blue robot dashes into the room, his spindly arms flail flailing about to keep his balance. Good morning to my incredible, incredible sister, Fourth. It's me, your favorite little brother. Well, aren't you cute? Good morning, little brother. How are you this morning? I'm just peachy now that I get to see you, Forth. Are you ready for another fun-filled day of safe recreational activities? My smile feels a little less forced whenever I talk to little brother. His enthusiasm might feel a little fake, but he doesn't seem to know any other way to act. The tiny plaque on the back of his head tells me that he's a G7, long-term medical care companion unit. He, his specific model is designed for infant and child entertainment and enrichment. His job is to watch over me during the day and report any changes in my health to mother. I have to watch what I say around him just in case. Of course, little brother. I am ready when you are. Oh boy, this is going to be a great day. Just like yesterday and just like tomorrow. Well, not exactly like tomorrow, right? I am sorry, Forth. I do not understand what you just said. Please clar clarify your statement. Tomorrow is my birthday. I thought we were going to have a party like we always do. Now I understand. Of course we are going to do something special for your birthday. Exactly 17 years, 364 days, 6 hours, and 10 minutes ago, I got introduced to the best little sister in the whole wide universe. I will never forget how small and loud you were. You are much larger and much quieter now. I am so proud of you. Uh, thank you for the compliment? Yeah, that was really weird. <laughs> you are much quieter now. Like, uh, um, sure. You're welcome for shutting up for so long. Damn. You are very, very welcome, my darling little fourth. Have you ever found it odd that you're technically older than me, but we can still call you little brother? Oh, fourth, you are so silly. Even if I am older than you, I will always be your fun and lovable little brother. We'd better get moving before Auntie starts to wonder what is taking us so long. Right, right. Lest mother gets angry. Ooh. With that, little brother zooms out of my room and down the hallway towards the kitchen. I try to mimic his enthusiasm and follow after him. 
The floors of the space station are always cold and it bites at the soles of my feet as we walk. There are no windows in any of the rooms I am permitted to explore and the flickering of lights overhead turn everything a turn everything into a washed out shade of blue. Each hallway is an identical gray metal tube. Every room is the same little cap claustrophobic box. Nothing ever changes here. Nothing except me. In my mind, the lake is always moving. Like crashing waves, the swaying trees, and the billowing clouds. It all breathes in a way that the station never could. For a moment, I start to close my eyes. My lake slowly comes into focus through the dark... Fourth, are you listening? I just asked you a question. Oh, what? I just... My heart rate picks up as a hint of panic crawls up my throat. During my little daydream, I completely missed what little brother had just said. I was just thinking about... Well, I just... Is something the matter, my dear fourth? You are speaking in an unorthodox manner. Should I tell him about my dreams? Anything I tell little brother might end up in his next report to mother. Maybe I should just stay quiet about this. I think we should just keep it to ourselves. I open my mouth, but no sound comes out. Little brother monitors every little aspect of my behavior. I don't think I should be talking about something so strange. Mother might change my medications again, and that would mean a whole new round of awful side effects. I remember the time I kept not telling knock-knock jokes, and she said I was acting too hyper. The medication she gave me right after that caused the worst headaches I've ever had. Oh, that's weird. Too hyper? Oh, God, are they regulating your moods? Oh, that's terrible. Fourth? Oh, I was just thinking about my birthday. That is only logical. Birthdays only come once a year. Thank you for telling me what is on your mind. It is my directive to monitor all changes in your behavior. I appreciate your honesty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> honesty. I don't want to be honest with you. Normally, I am okay with honesty, but damn. Nah. Not this time. We keep walking until we reach the door to the kitchen. Enjoy your breakfast, my darling baby sister. I will be right outside the door if you need anything. Thank you, little brother. With that, little brother steps into his cha charging station next to the door and goes silent. The hallway suddenly feels very empty without little bro brother's cheerful beeping. I straighten out my dress and walk into the kitchen. I don't even know how I would act in this situation. Really. Which I'm pretty okay with being alone, but... Sometimes it can be a little too much. As soon as I walk through the door, I am hit with a, small, with a smell of cold, wet vegetables and fresh blood. I didn't have time to properly prepare myself, and I have to resist gagging a little. Even though Auntie calls this room her kitchen, not a lot of cooking actually happens in here. The pots and pans hanging on the wall have never been used, and all the big industrial stovetops have, don't have any power. In fact, the only thing that works in here is the gigantic sink and only for, and only for drinking water. Aunt, Auntie's food synthesizers do all the cooking. So this room has always felt a little redundant to me. There are two doors in the kitchen. One leads back to the hallway I just came from. The other leads towards the atrium and Big Sister's side of the station. A large chute in the middle of the dining table slides open with a series of excited beeps. Auntie flies into the room. Welcome back, Fourth. I hope you have been a good girl and properly digested everything I served you yesterday. Yes, Auntie, I am ready for another delicious meal with you. Oh, Fourth, you know just what to say to make this old ro robot feel brand new. I will take extra care to make sure this next meal is especially nutritious just for you. 
I mean, I was going to make your breakfast nutritious either way, but we can both pretend that this particular meal is a little more special than normal. No harm in that, right? Thank you, Auntie. I can't wait. While I might not be too thrilled about her cooking, I can't bring myself to hate Auntie. Her programming seems to be a little simpler than my other caretakers, and that makes her feel just a bit more honest. Model 62-F6F Food Processor. She knows how to make food healthy, but that's about it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, right? Probably better for you, honestly. I sit down on one of the stools in front of the table. I adjust my dress so the back of my calves don't touch the cold metal legs. All right, fourth, have a look at our menu and tell me what sounds particularly nutrici nutritious to you. Take your time, and I mean you have only 14 minutes and 11 seconds left until breakfast is over. But that is not something I am too concerned about. You have always been such a reliable eater. A small digital screen appears in front of Auntie's food synthesizer, giving me rather unappetizing options. Uh-oh. Well, we are going to save this right here. I know I already made one decision, but go ahead and kind of... Do what I can. It doesn't really matter what I pick. I'll just have to eat one of the other options for my lunch later today. Plain yogurt, boiled sweet potatoes, sardine peas. Well, none of those sound good for breakfast, so let's go with yogurt. I'll go with the plain yogurt. Absolutely, Forrest, coming right up. Have a light breakfast. As her food synthesizer powers up, Auntie emits a cheerful little jingle. I can't help but smile and hum along to the familiar tune. With a loud slurping sound, a pale white liquid emerges from her synthesizer, filled with floating chunks of something that doesn't exactly look like yogurt. Aw? What is this? I think she had some bits of tofu still stuck in her tubes from yesterday. Ah. And just like a perf and just like that, a perfectly healthy meal is ready to go. Dig in forth and do not forget to chew. Should yogurt be uh chewy? Not normally no, but like we agreed, this one is special. A tofu in the middle of it? I heard tofu is pretty alright. But it doesn't taste as good as real meat. As far as I would know, I've never tried tofu, but I guess I could go food exploring eventually. Her other arm transforms into a fork and floats over for me to use. I try to maintain a smile as I take my first bite. Overall, it tastes rather sour and the chunks of tofu are much colder than the yogurt around it. Feeling more like squishy ice cubes in my mouth. Eh. It's very wet. Thank you, Auntie. <laughs> the look on her face. <laughs> oh, God. Wet tasting food. Ugh. Unless it's supposed to be. Ugh. Yogurt's pretty good, though. Thank you, Forth. I can always count on you to appreciate my cooking. I hurry and eat the rest of my breakfast in silence. When it's finally gone, Auntie's food synthesizer begins to clean itself. Little jets of soapy water shoot out and wipe down the plate. Huh. How was your breakfast, no Fourth? Uh, if it's supposed to be yogurt and tofu, I think it would just depend on the food flavoring, right? Whether or not it'd be good or not. I think it just depends. So... But clearly, fourth does not like it, so big rip. And when you live in this kind of scenario, though, you learn to kind of just eat whatever is there. So that is totally that is a totally acceptable reaction. That breakfast should provide the exact amount of calories you need until lunchtime, and not teaspoon not a teaspoon more. You have fun digesting, and I'll see you in exactly four hours and 45 minutes. Woo! Alrighty. Bye, Auntie! With that, Auntie floats down into her, her metal chute and disappears. 
chunk. <laughs> All right. Well, apparently Auntie tends to some sort of greenhouse beneath the kitchen, but I've never seen it. All the food I eat is produced on the lower level. Huh. I've always wanted to know what it looks like. Maybe it's a tiny farm with all the vegetables growing in cute little rows. I've seen pictures of farms in my books. Auntie also grows a lot of meat for me, so she must have some sort of hatchery for all of the fish she forces me to eat. Fish is good for you, though. I have a few minutes left until little brother comes to fetch me. After breakfast, he'll take me to the playroom for the next few hours. Playroom? I hear playroom and that scares me. What is a playroom? <laughs> is it... Is this supposed to be like a... Like a... Uh, what, what were they called? Like the McDonald's playhouses or whatever? Like that? I washed the horrible taste out of my mouth by drinking directly from the sink faucet. All the water in the station is recycled, so it has a strange metallic taste that I have always hated. Yeah, oh, that doesn't sound very healthy. Fourth gear, are you ready to go? You're right there, little brother. I take one last gulp of water before I go. It's time for little brother to escort me to our next activity. Okay. So, hmm. Curious. Here we are, fourth. My favorite place on the whole station. Aww. I love his faces! Ah! Oh boy, I can't wait. I cannot wait to see what sort of safe and enjoyable activities you choose today. Safe and enjoy. What is safe and enjoyable? I'm like, come on. Football's enjoyable. It's not exactly entirely safe, but it's enjoyable. I can't share little brother's enthusiasm for the playroom anymore. I might have liked this room at some point in the past, but now I just feel a little too big for all this. That's fair. I, when you hit a certain age, like, some of this stuff is just not. It's not gonna cut it. The chairs in here are, are built for toddlers. So I have to hug my knees to my chest to fit. Oh, that's weird. The walls are padded and the tables are made of rubber with round corners. Oh, so literally like... <laughs> it's a padded room. Oh god. Why? That's fine for toddlers, but not for adults. You can tell they are not equipped to deal with adults. Large screens hang high up on the walls, displaying fun math and science facts, along with cartoony images of... The station that plays on play on loop. Huh. Yeah. I can't wait either. I'm glad that you agree. Would you like to play catch with me? Or have some quiet drawing time? Um about that. What is wrong, Forth? Don't you think that I'm too old for all these toys and stuff. I pick up one of the plastic cars little brother built and roll it around in my hand. The plastic is so soft I can leave dents on its surface just by squeezing it. Ugh. I do not understand what you just said. These toys are perfectly suited for a human child between the ages of 4 and 17. Well, tomorrow I will be 18, so maybe we could do something different? You bring up a very good point, Forth. Tomorrow you will be indeed 18 years old. And I will have to draft new activities suited for your age. Only? Ah, oh, come on. But for today, you are still within the acceptable acceptable age bracket, and we will spend one last day enjoying ourselves. I can wait one more day. I was hoping that little brother might allow me to decide my own activities in the future. I might be able to trick him into giving me more privileges. Man, what a rough life. Between 4 and 17. <gasps> oh, Lord. I wonder... Ooh. 
I wonder if, um... What, what kind of activities they'll talk about doing. If I can leave the playroom, or better yet, explore without a chaperone, I might find something help- Find something to help me escape. The best I can do right now is play along. I have a feeling that not a lot of scheming is going to get done this morning. Well, and you trying to leave will probably set them off, so... We'll play along, why not? I could play catch with little brother, maybe... And maybe use the game as an excuse to go out into the hall. It would be easy to turn playtime into a chance for exploration. Plus a chance to stretch my legs sounds pretty good right now. Exercise, man, exercise. Now stretch them legs. Them long thighs. Yeah. Or I could use my drawing time to plan ahead. Writing things down helps me remember them better, and I have some ideas I want to put onto paper. Hmm. We could try playing catch in the hall. Oh, because keeping everything mental might be easier. The only problem with keeping everything mental is like, what if the short term memory loss becomes more of a problem? Yeah, I can see that being kind of an issue. Hmm. Let's try the play catch option. Can we play catch together, little brother? You want to play catch? With me? Because he, he was talking about... Uh, wasn't he playing something like catch earlier or asking us to? And so this would be a little easier. Uh, is that not... Oh, happy day! I get to spend time with my favorite person. This is going to be so great. Yeah, it'll keep him distracted. This will help. A lot. Yeah, but there isn't a lot of room to play catch in here, is there? Well, where else would we go to play? We could always go out and into the hall. There is plenty of room outside. The space just outside the playroom is permitted for light recreational exercise, so I have no objections. The door unlocks and we head out into the hallway. We stop once we get to the four-way intersection in the middle of the living quarter. We take a few steps apart from one another and I make sure that I am facing towards the kitchen further down the hall. The hall behind me leads towards some of the rec restricted areas of the station and if my plan works, I might just get a chance to dish a little brother. Get ready, fourth. Little brother holds up a yellow rubber ball for me to see. Then he pitches it with long, with enough force to reach all the way down to where I am standing. I catch the ball and throw it back. Little brother's limbs extend out like metal hoses and easily catch the ball. We toss the ball back and forth, but I make sure to take a step backwards each time I catch the ball. Little by little, I am increasing in the distance between me and little brother. Eventually, we're so far, to, far apart that I have to throw the ball with all my might. I'm actually getting a little tired and starting to work up a sweat. I glance behind myself and see another intersection behind me. One more step and I am in the restricted area. I toss the ball one last time and get ready. Little brother hurls the ball at me. I intentionally let it fly past me. It bounces and rolls into the restricted area. Don't worry, little brother. I'll go get it. I run after the ball and give it the strongest kick I can. It ricochets to the right and rolls out of sight. I don't wait for little brother's response and chase after it. Uh-oh. Being mischievous, are we? I like it. Let's get it. I spot the ball and give it another hearty kick. It might be a little flimsy, but at least I have an excuse to explore back here. I have some vague memories of this area. 
It is close to the old medical bay, and I think little brother uses some of these rooms for storage. I can't be sure too many of these doors look different from how I remember. I can feel my heart beating louder as I take a few tentative steps towards one of the locked doors. There's a keypad with six blank buttons and a blinking red light. I think about touching it, but I don't want to set off any alarms. Don't touch it. Quite literally, let's not touch it. I walk a little further, seeing only more locked doors and more keypads. My breathing is getting heavy. I think I might have pushed myself too far already. I shouldn't have wasted so much time on my little ruse. Am I actually tired or am I just nervous about being somewhere I shouldn't? Fourth, you cannot be back there. Please return to the designated play area at once. I found the ball. I'll be right there a little. I feel a bolt of pain in my chest. Something is wrong. I'll be right there. I just... The words catch in my throat as a horrible tightness grips my lungs. Fourth, your heart rate is elevated beyond safe levels. Please return to the designated play area at once. That's weird. Is she like... Watch for a reason? Like, do we have to like... Be in certain areas of the building and not go into restricted areas because it could actually hurt her or i try to take a step back towards little brother but my knees buckle and i fall on fall to the floor my vision going dark uh oh what happened ah no i am swallowed up in a vortex of stinging pain it feels like I have broken glass in my blood. My heart painfully pumps the little shards through my veins. Well, that's not good. I should have known better than to push my body like this. Uh-oh. This is what the d disease does to my body. Oh. Stupid little girl. You should have known better. If you can hear me, please respond. Little brother? Oh no! The inky blackness is slowly replaced with the buzzing yellow lights of the medical bay. I awake to find myself lying face up on a gurney, staring into the worried face of little brother. I panic for a moment, violently thrashing my arms and legs. When I see that the gurney's leather straps aren't tying me down, I am able to relax. Oh, thank goodness you gave me quite the scare. What happened? Our game of catch must have been too much for you. Your vitals just plummeted for a second and you passed out cold. I should have known better. I am sorry for scaring you. It is not your fault, Forth. It is our job to take care of your health. This is clearly all my fault. I knew the risks associated with physical assertion. But sti I still agreed to play catch with you. I should have insisted on a quiet drawing game. No, I wanted to be play catch. You shouldn't blame yourself. How about we take it easy for the rest of the day? I will contact the other caretakers and ask them to adjust their scheduled activities. A cold stab of fear hits me when I realize what little brother just said. Mother is going to find out I was in a restricted area. What are you going to tell them? That our darling fourth is tired from her morning activities. Is there anything else that I need to add? You aren't going to tell them where I passed out, are you? In the restricted area? I do not see the relevance. Okay, cool. Then you promise you won't tell mother? Of course not. You were not intentionally trespassing, just trying to catch the ball. Oh, hey. <laughs> the ball thing worked, hey. Freaking robot. <laughs> I have to fight back tears as I wrap little brother up in a big hug. My arms barely reach all the way around his cylindrical body, but I don't let go. Thank you. I'm feeling much better now. Aw, thank you, Forth. When you feel better, I feel better. Then we all feel better. All comfy and cozy up in our bed. You slept through our morning schedule, so we better get ready for lunch. We should not keep Auntie waiting. Yeah, let's get moving. 
Very cool. This was a disaster. I didn't find anything useful and I almost got mother's attention. My body feels stiff and my chest still hurts, but I can stand without getting dizzy. My escape plan might have to wait a few days until I get back to full strength. That's annoying. I let out a pained sigh and follow little brother back towards the kitchen. It'll be all right. We got this. Lunch is thankfully uneventful. I end up eating the boiled sweet potatoes this time. But they are much greener than sweet potatoes are supposed to be. Yeah, that doesn't look healthy. What? That? I would never touch that. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Honestly, if I were in this situation, I wouldn't want it, but I would sadly have to eat it anyway. Auntie explains that she forgot to remove the leaves and roots when she processed the sweet potatoes. It tastes like dirt, and I do my best to swallow without ga gagging. Oh. Good girl. You gotta deal with what you got, anyway. Auntie bids me farewell, and I wait by the second door for little brother to come pick me up. Why does she constantly have to be chaperoned? That's a little bit weird. We walk down the hallway until we arrive at the glass doors leading into the atrium. We walk down the hallway until we arrive at the glass doors leading into the atrium. The atrium divides the port and starboard sections of the living quarters and is where I start the second half of my day with Big Sister. Have fun with Big Sister. I will see you at dinner time. And be sure to take it easy. Your vitals are still a little shaky. Understood, little brother. Bye! Goodbye. Let me kick you across the floor, please. I'm just kidding. With that, little brother steps into another charging station and the atrium doors unlocked. Rolling down the highway. Open that, it goes my way. I step into the atrium and take a moment to relax. The atrium is one of the nicer rooms in the station. The lamps overhead create artificial sunlight and plastic plants are arranged to re-resemble a field of grass. Speakers hidden inside styrofoam boulders play white noise that is supposed to sound like wind. If I try really hard, I can almost buy into the illusion. Mostly, I just like how warm the atrium is compared to the rest of the station. Warm rooms are nice. The cold makes you, like, drop things and your hands not really function. I know that one. That is a pain. The glass door on the other side of the room opens and Big Sister approaches with heavy, ponderous steps. Uh! Of course, why do you have to be so tall? Big sister. Going big. Freaking tall. Tall person. I see you. I get it. Look into my eyes. Fourth, we will be heading directly to the library. I will hear no complaints on the matter. Do you understand? <laughs> Holy crap! She's gonna manhandle me! No! Of course, big sister. Very good. We have much to do today. Why does she look angry? Forward march! Uh-oh. Yes, ma'am. Big sister has always been harder to read than any of uh, than my other caretakers. She never says more than she needs to, and she rarely diverts from her baseline program. She is an OCP7 security drone, and she takes her job very seriously. Hence why she sounds like a drill sergeant. Oh. That's fun. 
Dur during the day, I often see her patrolling different sections of the ship, and at night, I sometimes hear her walking around outside my door. V5. Oh, um. <coughs> that. I don't mind spending time with Big Sister, but I rarely feel fully comfortable around her. She doesn't try to cheer me up like little brother, and she doesn't joke around like auntie. Oh, that's fun. Most of the time, she's just quiet. Big Sister escorts me to the library and directs me to my desk in the center of the room. The computers here store thousands of digital books for me to read, and... Big sister tutors me about a different subject each day. Oh, homework. I love homework. Big sister teaches me about grammar, science, mathematics, and galactic history. After each lesson, she prints out a stack of worksheets for me to complete. Well, at least not regular history. History is all right. But eventually you just start hearing the same stuff over and over and it's like, all right. Can we find another subject or something else? Thank you. Especially when you've heard the same stuff for like three years in a row. Then you're like, all right. I need more than just one part of history, please. Today's assignment is a multiple choice quiz. You have until six to finish and submit it for grading. Any additional time left over can be, be used for quiet reading and review. Do you have any questions or concerns about this assignment? No big sister, I believe I can handle it. Very good, I expect nothing less from you. She looked blissful for like a second. Like, just a second. And one more thing. Yes, big sister. I was hoping you and I could... Ahem. You might not notice that today's work... You might notice that today's worksheet is a few pages longer than normal. If you are able to complete all of it today, there will be additional free time allotted tomorrow. Hey! You mean I would get to end class early tomorrow? I don't remember you ever letting class end before it was supposed to. Well, it has been 8 months and 22 days since I got to spend any time off duty with you and little brother. That was the day we made a scavenger hunt for you in the atrium. I had almost forgotten about that day. Big sister printed off fun facts and hid them all over the atrium. It wasn't that hard to find them all, but it was at least something different. That's pretty cool, so they get creative every now and then. I noticed that little brother was submitting requests for new morning activities with you and I... With you and I wanted to do the same. I noticed little brother was submitting requests for new morning activities with you and I wanted to do the same. That doesn't sound right. I don't know why. Uh... Oh, okay, I get it. Ha ha ha, the comma after the U... The comma after the U is missing. So that's the only reason I was really confused. I was like, what, what, what? There's no... So how it's supposed to sound is, I noticed that little brother was submitting requests for new morning activities with you, comma, and I wanted to do the same. Okay. I was like kind of confused. Woo! All right, we, lo we love grammar, so I, I will assist with corrections if need be. <laughs> Even I mess up, though, so take it with a grain of salt, please. More group activities might be beneficial to your mental health. If you would like, I can arrange for Auntie to serve your birthday lunch as a picnic in the atrium. How does that sound? Oh, that's pretty cool. They're pretty nice. Oh, that actually sounds wonderful. It would be a great way to celebrate my birthday. Are you sure Mother would approve? She doesn't like it when we leave our designated areas without contacting Mother now. Request pending. Oh! 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 
She goes silent and I can hear a, a series of beeps as she sends a signal to mother. No, you don't have to do that. We can do something else for my birthday. What if mother comes down to the library because of this? There's only one door and not a lot of places I could hide. What would she do to me if she said no? Aww. I'm sorry, big sister. I really would have loved to have a picnic with you. Mother said no. There is no point in continuing this conversation. We have wasted enough time with frivolities. Frivolities. Okay. You have work to do. Oh. She steps away and promptly plugs herself into her charging station before I can say anything else. What was that all about? For a minute there, Big Sister was acting nice. I can't remember the last time she showed me this much emotion. Wow. That's actually sad. Aww. They wanted to have a picnic and Mother said no. How rude. Stop being mean, Mother. I have to bury my disappointment and focus on the task at hand. The sooner I finish this worksheet and the, the better and who knows. There's a chance I could still get some time off tomorrow even without the picnic. Luckily, today's worksheet isn't anything too complicated. It's just a few dozen pages pages of astrophysics and 20 pages of dynamic molecular theory. I use a black crayon to fill in the bubbles next to the right answer. Things like numbers and figures have always come easy to me, even with my bad memory. Big sister makes me study so thoroughly, uh, study so thoroughly I can usually remember most of the stuff. Even if I forget the smaller details of the lesson, the bigger picture still remains. I can almost see the numbers and equations lining up on their own. Hence, muscle memory. It's the great, it's the great point of learning. Even if you think you don't know a whole lot of it, usually it kind of works out. So. <sighs> I finished the worksheet in only half an hour. Maybe Big Sister made this worksheet easier than normal as an early birthday present. I look over at her, but she hasn't moved from her charging station. She, she seemed really disappointed when Mother rejected her picnic idea. Well, I'd be disappointed too. Like, what the heck? What is Mother's problem? Chill out. For a moment, I thought Big Sister, Sister actually missed spending time with me. I know she's a robot, but for a moment, I wanted to believe her concern was genuine. Yeah, that kind of sucks. Because if she's like the security guard type, that's kind of hard. And I say that with a ton of love because I know not everybody is the exact same, but still. When you're like a hardcore person and you have trouble trying to express your emotions softly. Uh, the one moment you actually get to do it, it feels great. But when it's rejected, it's like sad. That's sad. No. Either way, her little outburst of kindness has left me more confused than ever. I try to shake this feeling off and move on. I feed my worksheet into the slot and wait for the machine to process the result. A small screen appears to show me how many questions I got correct. 100% correct! Damn. You're a genius! I can't help but feel a little proud about this. Now that I am done... Now that I am all done, I am free to use my computer until dinner time. I touch the screen and boot up the application. Normally, I like playing the computer's memory games since they help me clear my head. Big Sister uses my scores from these games to help track my mental health. The better I do, the more privilege privileges she lets me have after class. There is also a textbook ready for me to read. Big Sister approves my reading material ahead of time and downloads it onto my computer. Today it seems like she picked out a medical textbook on biological cell growth after specific, under specific atmospheric conditions. I'm pretty sure I've read this one before and I'm already bored from reading the synopsis alone. Either option would be good exercise for my memory and either would offer a Decent way to pass time until dinner. I tap the screen and make my choice. Uh, what about the memory games? 
I mean, you have memory loss, so would it really help? I don't know. Maybe the medical book. I feel like maybe that would be helpful. I click on the icon for the reading app and a digital version of the medical textbook appears on my screen. At one point, Big Sister used to print out the books for me, but Mother said it was a waste of material. Looking at the page, I am certain I have read this exact same book before, but I guess Big Sister must have selected it at random. I let out a frustrated sigh and started reading anyway. The writing style is so dry and straightforward that I can feel my eyelids growing heavy. Part of me wishes I could read something like this in bed, I would fall asleep instantly. The textbook, textbook talks about various kinds of cell division and the different effects atmospheric conditions have on their development. I flip through page after page of diagrams and old black and white photos. There are 20 pages back to back just about one spe species of mold. Mold is insane, honestly. I almost give up once it starts talking about cancer cells. I have read all of this before and there is absolutely nothing interesting in... I pause for a moment, looking at page count... The page count in the corner of the screen. The computer says that I am on page 47. But the number printed on the page says 53. I push the back button to check the previous page's line to check that the previous page is lined up correctly. The computer says 46, and so does the print on the actual page. Huh. Curious. I click ahead a few pages and see that the page numbers line up again after page 48. There has to be some sort of error here. Maybe a file got uploaded out of order or something like that. I click ahead until the end of the textbook to see that there are no other pages and are ordered correctly. For some strange reason, only page 47 is out of place. Even stranger still, it appears to be a page from an entirely different textbook. Oh, that's weird. Definitely weird. But I will stop this first little video here. It's not going to be little by any means. I'm going to try and do an hour of these just to get through, hopefully, the demo. If anything else, I'll probably just combine these videos all into one, and then you guys can have at it. But I, if that ends up being two separate videos, then I will see you in the next video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, and share this game around if you would like to help the developer get their name out there and their game out there.